Hello everyone, it's Jules by Jude here and today I have a little special project that we're going to do and I want to show you a few things that we're going to do it with and because it might be long, let's get started. Okay, this is a specialty cutter. Bought this from Jessima Tutorials. She got an Etsy store. Okay, anyhow, <clears throat> we don't have a specialty collar cutter you can make one just like that okay anyhow it was definitely worth the uh, amount that I paid for it and I would do it again in an instant and I'm having a lot of fun with it that said let's move on black rolled out on the second second setting of my polymer clay machine same with this sheet one's going to be a, a veneer and the other is going to be the backing okay now, this is from our beautiful and wonderful stampers out there who love scrapbooking. Okay, stamping around by stamping. So what I'm going to do is use this to put an impression on my clay. Okay, so I put water on it. And that's with my water bottle. I'm going to stand up so I get a good impression. But just so you know, it kind of just sprays on there just as a barrier and a releasing agent. Okay? Let's see here. I want to go down the center first. And I'll maybe explain it to you later after I see how this turns out. Oh, that's working great. I love that. Perfect. Let's see here. I want to get everything. Great. My goodness. That worked out great. I'll put this aside. I love that. There you go. It's a very pretty print. There's a lot can be done with this print. So let's move on. What we're going to do is we are going to put our cutter on here now and decide what part of that design we want on our necklace okay so that's my job at this point point. and you can turn it all around however you see fit remember that this cuts this is going to be cut this cutter came with two parts so it's kind of interesting. You could use it for a whole lot of different aspects. I want a few of those flowers in here. I'm not sure if I can get the Oh, there we go. That'll work. So I'm looking here, 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 and here. Not there. Not yet. sure once you do decide that everything is this cutter is on that clay sometimes I you know get into absorbed into the design and trying to see what I want in my collar or cutter and I'm not on the clay all right here we go I'm standing up and I'm going to push my plexiglass block on my cutter. I'm not pushing hard. This is this is this clay is rolled out. It's uh primo. It's rolled out on the second thickest setting on my machine. So it shouldn't take much. This particular piece is is very conditioned. Now, I'm, this is what I like to do. I take it off from here, okay? It's a little bit more. I'm, I'm into the dramatic part. Woo! <laughs> All right. This is what she's going to look like. 
and just hold just in case it didn't go all the way through in some areas make sure you if you do it the way I do it make sure you press down on your cutter so that it doesn't lift the cutter up but I kind of like to see it like that sometimes too cool huh all right now I'm gonna lift my cutter up gently you know too you, you can spray your cutters if you think that your clay is really soft or it needs to be all right pretty cool huh I like that so I'm gonna trim it up a little bit my, what does that mean well first of all I'm gonna take this little baby out right here it uh, doesn't really have much of an impression on it, so I'm just going to lift it up. There we go. Now, gently, I'm going to scrape the sides a little bit. And you know what? I'm not even going to do that now that I think about it, because I have to put it back on it. And when you have to put it back on it, you might need that little excess clay so that you can smear it into any gaps that might be present okay so I'm gonna put this aside for now looks pretty cool huh I like it all right and we're gonna move that down now collars should be pretty strong I think that's my opinion so that's not why I do it this way though but I'm not opposed to this the way I'm doing it because I know that the more strength you add to something that you wear around the neck like that, the better off you are. So, is it necessary? No. Um, but in this instance, it's going to be pretty cool. So, I'm going to take my cutter. Alright. Now, you can do this a couple ways. You can do it where the cutter is. You can turn it around. Like so. You could take your veneer and put it on top and cut it. It's a lot of different ways. I'm going to give it a shot this way though, okay? I'm going to gently trace this out. This is going to be my back. And you might be asking, or you may not be, why am I not just pushing it through and laying the other one on top? Aha, I'm going to show you. You might know already though. All right. I take this the possibilities that's what I like about this cutter when I saw it I'm like you know the possibilities for this cutter and this style is endless you could do so many things with this cutter and you can make this yourself actually I don't have time and she makes such good cutters she lives in Australia, but it's worth it. Her and I also buy from Jilly. Jilly Cutters. Both on Etsy. But anyway, enough about that. Not a commercial for them. But I do like to point out when I'm using something I enjoy to use. And uh, this is one of those occasions. Yeah, I just mean you can use mica, which I might. I probably will actually on that one. It'll bring those flowers out beautifully. Or you can use paints, alcohol paints, acrylic paints, PVO paints, which oh, I wish I could use those in a lot more things. Those PVO paints are awesome. The designs that come out of that. So really I'm tracing this because this is my backing and I want something to be behind that hole that's on my veneer. I am about to show you what I mean by that. I just want to make sure I get the, you know, the most of my design cut out. I don't want it to be too sloppy looking. 
And anyways, it would be less work for me afterwards. But just make sure this cutter doesn't move on you. Because you don't have it pushed all the way through. Alright. There we go. Let me just take a quick look around. I think we're close here. satisfied with that amazingly so that is what she looks like now no hole Voila. now bring this one down and hole see it I'm going to pick this piece up and place it on top of this piece and the magic happens. <laughs> I'm going to carefully place this on top of its back. And just be a little careful. So. As soon as you get that oval settled you can start taking a look at how you have it on here and is this just the way I want it kind of thing and a lot of times I find when I've been working with this this past week is adjusting these in the back back here these uh this section that curves around the neck is the biggest of concern. Okay. Straighten out your point because you don't want to mess that up, all right? Now begin to smear. Everybody should be familiar with that. And try not to put too many prints on it. I'm real bad about that. I put my fingers on everything. <laughs> like that. Give it a little support there by putting your other hand on the side of it like that. And let's see here. Let's get some of that junk off of there. Maybe at least you see it lifting somewhere. That's where you want to press a little bit. Okay. There you have it. For the most part. Now what you're looking at is a collar, cut fairly well, if I must say so myself, and you have a section in here. What do you want to do with that? You want to put a stone in that, you want another, another piece of clay in there, you want to fill it with paint, do you want to fill it with uh, stone chips do you want 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 all right so here's probably what you want to do right now is now I have a mandrel that I'm going to place this on and I'm going to show you that way and I'm willing to bet that if you get real creative you can create something similar to that that you can place on or you can just leave it this way. I wouldn't recommend that though. You need a little curvature around the neck and you know, underneath. So I've seen a lot of people roll things and place them under that so that it, it slopes down. So I'm gonna show you a little prized item I have here that I thought would come in handy no matter what project I work with pertaining to jewelry in the sense of a mandrel. Okay, now, that piece of hair down there. There she is, and you can decide for yourself how far down is she. So let me just fix her a little bit. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but there. All right. 
One thing for sure, you, you use an apparatus like this, you need to make sure that everything is touching there, the metal, okay? In all, all instances, because it'll bubble up, bubble up, it needs to be pretty much, and you can see that when I am pushing it, that it is indeed up. But that's your job. You take it like this, you see there's a space there, nope. You need to press that down. It needs to touch that metal. Okay. Next thing is this crease inside the uh, on the side here. Now, what I would like to do is just smear some of that out. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do before I put it in the oven. It's going to go in the oven, not the toaster oven, the real oven. I'm going to put it on a cookie sheet. I'm going to put a piece of foil lightly draped over top of it and I'm going to cook it for 275 for about 45 minutes to an hour and then I'll be back. Oh, by the way, I'm not going, well, I don't know, maybe I should. Nope, I'm not. I'm not going to put any mica or anything on the outside right now. I'm trying for some reason to get a matte finish and then decide what goes inside. You don't have to decide that now. You can put it in later. And that's what I'm going to do. So once again, I am going to bake this. After I smear the edges, see that's lifted up again. After I smear the edges, make sure everything is pushed down against my metal. 275, 45 minutes to an hour. I'll be back. See, I hope I got this in the shot. This is it. It's baked. Now what do you do from here, right? I'm going to focus on this area in here. Okay. And this area is where I want. It's just, just falls off. Now, what I'm going to do here, I think, is put maybe a braid or just a tube-like uh, snake around the the um, cabochon area the edge and then that way it will look like it has a decorative bezel around it here okay everyone i know it was a bit of an abrupt ending there but what i've decided to do is i think that video that i have here for you it, it's enough for it to stand on its own at this time I'm in the process of making different collars with different types of cabochons to show off to you when I do if I do not show the exact process I'll explain it to you okay but um, you got a really good start on how to use this collar how to make a collar how to place it on a mandrel how to put a design on it, how to cut it, those sorts of things. The rest of the ideas and the designing aspects can either come from you or when I'm ready, I'll show you the different colors that I have and I've made because I'm really looking forward to finishing some off. But I fear that my little particularities there about how this is, how that is, uh, I'm real particular about that. So I really take my time with some of that stuff. And when I get them done, I'll show them to you. But this is a really good start. And I think that um, if you go back and look at some of the videos that I have, you will be able to create your own and have your own ideas with that. But I do intend on showing you some more. So this is Jules by Jude. Uh, if you like the video, press like. If you like it, share it, and please, by all means, subscribe. Thanks. Have a blessed day.